JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March for March the 26th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, today uh, we'll talk about yesterday's uh, movements in the markets. EU and US uh, and the major EU and US indices gained yesterday. However, today Asian, uh, the Asian ones uh, were mixed. With regards to the currencies, the US dollar continued to uh, retreat against the other G10 currencies. And this relates all these market moves. All these market moves uh, relate to the U.S. Senate approving a two a two trillion dollar stimulus package. While uh, today we the main events may be the U.S. initial jobless claims for last week and the Bank of England monetary policy decision. As for the rest of uh, today's events, we have we already had the U.K. retail sales coming out. Uh, we get the US final GDP for the fourth quarter. Tonight we have uh, Japan's to Tokyo CPIs and we also have uh, a speaker today uh, who is Fed Chair Powell. Uh, it will be interesting to hear from him uh, given the latest uh, stimulus actions by, by the Fed. Now, as always, let's start our analysis with the performance of the greenback against the other G10 currencies. The dollar continued trading lower against uh, most of the other G10s on Wednesday and during the Asian morning Thursday. It gained only against the Aussie and the Kiwi and slightly uh, versus uh, the Swedish Krona, while it underperformed the most against uh, NOC, the Euro, and the Canadian dollar in that order. The greenback was also down against the safe havens, the franc and the yen. Now, the relative strength of the safe havens, yen and franc, combined with the weakness of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi, suggests a risk of trading environment. However, the slide of the US dollar and the, strength and the strengthening of the oil-related loony and crone uh, point otherwise. Thus, with the effect, with the effects performance uh, painting a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we will turn our gaze to the equity world. Okay, here major EU and US indices traded in the green, with Nasdaq being the only exception, uh, closing 0 0.45 uh, down. Now, what may have allowed most indices to record uh, their second straight day of gains may have been expectations that the U.S. Senate was getting closer to a to a two trillion U.S. dollar stimulus package to support businesses and households uh, and households hit by the coronavirus spreading. Uh, European European bourses may have re received an extra boost by Germany's decision to suspend its uh, debt break for the first time in its history in order to finance a large uh, aid package. Now, in the US, although both the S&P and Dow finished in green territory, they came off their peaks following reports uh, which raised doubts on how quickly the US bill may pass. In any case, during the Asi Asian session, the U.S. Senate passed uh, passed the bill unanimously, sending it to the House of Representatives, which is expected to vote uh, today or tomorrow. Asian indices finished uh, mixed, with Japan's Nikkei and China's Shanghai Composite sliding for uh, 4.51 and uh, and uh, 
0.60% uh, respectively. Now, this may have been a sell the fact response after the bill's approval in the US Senate, or it could have been a reality check as uh, new infected cases and deaths from the virus hit uh, new daily records. And we can see that on this graph. Here I have uh, the daily, uh, the, new the new infections and new deaths on a daily basis, and you can see that uh, the graph points to new uh, record daily increases in both cases and deaths. Now, as uh, for today, market participants may pay extra attention to the US initial jobless claims for uh, last week, which are expected to have surged to 1 million from 281k uh, the week before due to companies announcing layoffs and uh, state lockdowns forcing stores to close. This, uh, this, would be hi this would be higher than the peaks uh, seen during the 1982 and 2009 recessions. That said, with, um, with investors already anticipating a very bad number, we don't expect a major market reaction if, if the forecast is met. Even if we get a higher number, the market reaction may not be huge as the estimates range from a minimum of 250K to a maximum of 4 million which means that some investors may have been already positioned for a worse than expected outcome. In our view, the dollar may slide somewhat in case the forecast is exceeded, but we don't expect the retreat to last for long. After all, a very bad figure may result in a risk of uh, trading, uh, may result in a risk of trading in the aftermath and paradoxically may once again prove supportive for uh, the dollar. In a dollar denominated world, Investors, uh, investors scaling back their risk exposure may prefer to hold cash in order to be able to cover losses uh, and margin calls elsewhere. Uh, history has shown that uh, in extremely turbulent conditions, the greenback may outperform even the traditional safe havens like the yen and the franc. Now, in any case, we prefer to exploit any potential dollar gains against the Aussie and the Kiwi currencies, which come under selling press, under selling interest when investors' uh, morale uh, deteriorates. Now, apart from uh, the U.S. initial jobless claims, uh, we also have a Bank of England decision today. Some investors may be eager to see whether the bank will uh, decide to cut rates to zero. However, with officials already cutting rates twice this month, bringing, uh, bringing them to 0.1% uh, and also signaling a restart of uh, their QE purchases, we don't expect uh, officials to push uh, the cut button today. We believe that they will stand ready to do so if needed, but with little ammunition left, they may be careful with regards to the timing of further easing. Another reason why we expect policymakers to wait for a while before and if they decide to act again is uh, Chancellor's announcement of a, of a large uh, fiscal spending package. It would be interesting though to see whether there will be any changes in language given that this will be the first gathering headed by the new governor Andrew Bailey. Uh, GBP, GBP traders may keep most of their, uh, I, we believe that GBP traders may keep most of their attention to headlines surrounding uh, the spreading of the coronavirus in the UK, with, no, with the number of infected cases in the kingdom rising to 9,529 on Wednesday from 8,077 in the day before, further acceleration may result in some pound selling. Despite the currency's latest recovery, at least against the US dollar, we believe that the last thing investors and traders would like to do is holding assets with extra risk. And the extra risk related to the pound is Brexit and the transition period uh, negotiations. So if indeed the broader trading environment switches back to risk off, we would expect the pound to lose uh, the most ground against uh, the dollar, as well as uh, the safe havens, yen and franc it could uh, underperform uh, the euro as well, which appeared to have attracted some heaven flows as well in late February, early March. It, the, currency, the common currency could uh, wear its uh, safe heavens to the again, even if uh, a broader USD strength uh, drags euro dollar lower. Now, as uh, for the rest of uh, today's events, 
during the early European morning we already got the UK retail sales for February. Headline sales slid 0.3% month over month after rising 1.1% in January, missing the forecast of a slowdown to 0.2%. The core rate entered negative waters as well, sliding to minus 0.5% month over month from plus 1.8%. The forecast was for the core rate to slide minus 0.2%. Now later in the day, apart from the initial jobless claims from the US, uh, we also get the final GDP for uh, the fourth quarter. The final print is expected to confirm its uh, second estimate, namely that the US economy grew 2.1% quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate uh, uh, during the last three months of uh, 2019. Now, in any case, barring, barring any major deviations, deviations from the forecast, we expect this release to pass unnoticed. After all, we have uh, models pointing to how the economy has been performing during the, first, during the first quarter of uh, this year, uh, during which the outbreak of the coronavirus happened and thus investors may be more interested on, di on data concerning uh, that period. Surprisingly, the Atlanta Fed GDP Now model points to a 3.1 quarter over quarter growth rate, but the New York Now cast uh, suggests a slowdown to 1.5%. Having in mind how turbulent the quarter has been, we lean towards the New York model, but in any case, we will have to wait for the actual data to confirm whether and uh, how much was the economy hurt. Now, as for tonight, during the Asian Morning Friday, Japan releases the Tokyo CPIs for March. No forecast is uh, currently available for the headline rate, but the core one is anticipated to have ticked down to 0.4% year over year from 0.5%. With regards to the speakers, uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell will make a, telev a televised interview today where we may get uh, more insights on the Fed's uh, latest actions uh, to fight the coronavirus and what the committee's uh, future plans uh, may be. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those uh, who are interested in uh, learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye from me, have a great uh, day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT just fair and direct.